is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, there he is. Ira, good morning, sir. Good morning. The last time we signed off, I had to go a day early on last week's Acura Pembroke Pines report. So we did it earlier Thursday. Boom, Donovan Mitchell traded. The whole summer settled. Now we can move forward with the training camp in three weeks. At least we put that aside. We put Durant aside. We put Mitchell aside. You can talk about the fallout all you want, but at least we now have some clarity on what's happened and what still might happen. Dude goes from Utah to Cleveland. God bless, dude. It's just like, really? That's my life in the NBA? Yeah. No, that's just that, that's not a lot of fun. Although I, I, Cleveland, I don't think really gave up that much and kept their three guys. I, I thought they did a really good job that's, overall. That's, I know, yeah. I know, Danny got, I know, Ainge got what he wanted also. Yes. So yes, but that, you know, that that's fine. I get it. Both got what they wanted, but. In the end, I don't think they really gave up the world for him. I mean, they probably weren't going to sign back Colin Sexton for the money he wanted because they have Garland. They were set there. So I understand that. The first round pick they took, they're a veteran team, the kid out of Kansas. They're not necessarily playing youth. But that's a lot of your future to give away. That's a lot when you look into your – I remember the Heat have been in this position before where you know that one more pick, one more pick swap might get you another deal – that's where the Knicks stop. That's where the Knicks said to themselves, you know what? We can trade our future drafts, but we're going to still need more. So Cleveland, it better be perfect now. Jared Allen right. better be great. Right. Mobley right. better be great. Garland right. better be great because this is all you're going to see for years to come from Cleveland. They've ter- certainly taken a step up, but I'm still not sure I'm, pro- I'm proclaiming them championship favorites or contenders now. They're going to grow into Ira, They had no choice, doggy. They're Cleveland. Yes. They're not a sexy destination. This is the only way they can maneuver and finagle a star to come to their town. Like they were lucky when LeBron, you know, they were able to draft LeBron. So right. they got their superstar. I, I, I don't, I, I think Cleveland did the right thing here because it's better to roll the dice and try to do something I agree. than sit there and wait and wait. And you're not a sexy destination. And, and if you let contracts expire, these players are going to leave on your ass anyway. So I commend them for, for trying. I, 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 I hate to have to commend that owner. Cause that guy's, you know, whatever, but I give him, I give him credit, man. You got to try, you got to go for it. This is the best they're going to do. They're Cleveland, man. And you make a really good point. If you don't show that you're trying, then all of a sudden when Garland becomes a free agent and Mobley becomes a free agent, you just lose your young guys. You're the Marlins. You're the Marlins. That's exactly the next word that was going to be out of my mouth. They realize we're going nowhere here. We're on the hamster wheel of nothing, and I want to get to something better. So I do commend their aggressive approach. I still, I I just still still chuckle about the Knicks, you know, for all the years you and I have put up with, oh, they lost out on Durant, they lost out on Hayward. The Knicks keep telling us they're this close to someone that, of course, is going to happen. His dad works for the Mets. He's from New York. He wants to be here. We're going to get it done. On draft night, we traded away everything to get all these picks. No one's in better position than us. And then clunk. And then they And and by the way. And they're Cleveland with skyscrapers. Nobody wants to go there either. So if you don't finagle your star to come there by via trade or draft, dude, you're just like Indiana and Utah and Milwaukee and Orlando and Charlotte and all these other places that your players are never going to go to because your owner and all your er everything that you created that atmosphere is not sexy to anybody. You had you had to do the same thing as Cleveland, dude. You have to do something, try something because you've been in the same rut for over two decades now. I, I, that, to me, it's baffling that the Knicks allowed this to happen. Actually, and they drew a say. very odd line in the sand because they were desperate and they traded this summer like they were desperate. They were telling you we need these draft assets. We're going to outmaneuver, maneuver, and outflank anyone. You know, it, it's almost like a chessboard. Okay. We've got more pieces. The, the other guy, you know, is just left to pawns. We're fine. And they still couldn't close the deal. It's remarkable. You've read the stories how Danny Ainge doesn't yeah. want to deal with the Knicks. I, I don't buy that. Danny Ainge was looking for the best possible deal. 
he didn't give a rat's butt where he went. I saw a story today, which I thought was preposterous, that the Jazz were unhappy because Mitchell wanted out, so they were going to send him to Siberia. B.S. Danny Ainge was making a deal. I wrote this in my Ask Ira today. Danny Ainge is going to make the best deal he can for his team. He's going to do it in Boston. He's going to do it in Utah because if he doesn't, his owner and the higher executives there, they're going to run him out because he wasn't acting in this team's right. best interest. Look, I'm not a fan of what he did. I can't see how I can sell tickets in 2022 and tell fans, but wait till 2027. It's going to right. be so much better. I don't think that's allowable. If I'm Adam Silver, I would step in and say, you can't trade a pick more than three years out. You can't keep selling that much of the future of your team. Sort of like what we hear from the Marlins. Oh, these young players are going to come around and they're going to be great. No, they're not. They're going to leave. And you wind up in that situation. But we've created, but wait a minute. They've created that environment because there are the haves and the have nots. And, and, And it's what I mean by that is we have the sexy destinations and we have the non sexy destinations. And that's become a problem in the NBA because cats will not stay in certain cities. They want to move to other cities that are bigger cities, uh, richer owners, all that kind of stuff. And, and that's a, and that's become a problem for the NBA. No matter you have your cap and all that, but it's still there are certain limitations. And they've tried to, you know, limit all that by by you being able to franchise your own and being able to pay them more than anybody else. But the problem is it's so much money now. That players are willing to take slightly less, 20, 30 million less, but to go to the next destination that's a lot sexier because, hey, I'm going to get 175 here instead of 210 over there. But, hey, I'm going to be much happier here. 175 is more than enough. But I We've think created teams, this environment. I think if teams live in the moment and they show the commitment, which obviously Utah did not, so I can understand Donovan Mitchell. I'm going to give you an example there, big old uh, Milwaukee. Now, Giannis is a unique case. He's a foreign player who maybe didn't want the big city and the bright lights, and I get all that. But he did re-up with them after they traded away their future for Drew Holiday, and they showed they were living in the moment. So I still think there are some places you can make that commitment to a player. San Antonio is another one. But that's I was just going to tell you, if you land the Duncan or a Giannis, who are humbled superstars, and you get – and hell, they landed three of them because Ginobili and Parker were just as humbled because those guys were superstars and they could have demanded. Even David, Rob- even even David Robinson. Even huh? David Robinson from yeah. his humble yeah. Navy, Naval Academy yeah. background. Yeah. He didn't go yeah. to a limelight college. He went to a place yeah. of service. So it's a You're matter right. of you have to find the right player for the right moment. But I do not begrudge Donovan Mitchell at all. And Donovan no. Mitchell, if they would have traded Rudy Gobert for win now players might have said, okay, I'm willing to try something different. We're not going to play in the drop defense with a big shot-blocking center who's a liability in the playoffs. I'm willing to try something different, but they didn't. They did a scorched earth. They talked about 2027 and 2029 you know, picks and all that. So I understand a player saying, I'm not going to wait five years for you to catch up to me. I've got to be somewhere else. So I think his position was totally understandable. The question now I have about the fallout of all of that well, you and I have spoken about it a bunch on our accurate Pembroke Pines reports is how incredibly deep the East is. Yes. Before Durant came back, you and I were talking last season, four teams finished within two games of first place. The Heat in first place tied for second, two games out, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, and Boston. So we went into the offseason saying there's a big four, there's a top four. Then Kevin Durant commits back to Brooklyn. I know big O, you're not as sold on their chemistry, but they have great talent. You'd have to agree yes. with that with Irving and Durant and maybe Simmons. So all of a sudden, maybe a big five. What Cleveland has done now with the starting lineup of Jared Allen and Mobley and Garland and Donovan Mitchell at least deserve to be close to consideration there. They you're jumped talking the Knicks. Six. They yeah, jumped so the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about six. So all of a sudden, you slip up a little. You're in the plan. And the no, no, I, I are... said they, ju- they jumped the Knicks. Is oh, what not I'm only they jumped the Knicks. That's what I was getting to. Not only that, so you have those six. Well, we know Toronto's going to be pretty good with Siakam and, yeah. and, and Van Vliet. Atlanta. You know, Chicago had a very good start to the season yeah. before um, before Alonzo Ball got injured. All of a sudden, the Knicks are not only playing for the play-in, but yeah. if a couple of those other teams at the bottom there start moving up a little bit, I think the Knicks could be fighting for their life just to get a number 10 seed 
let alone the playoff juggernaut they thought they were going to be with Mitchell, it could turn on a dime like that. All right. So sometimes this happens throughout the country. There's this old lady or an old man and the neighbors never see them and stuff is piling up all over the place. It's piling up so much. It, it comes outside of the house. And then before you know it, you have a hoarder and it's kind of a, a fire hazard. Those kind of things. They send in the authorities. They're trying to find the old people and they're hiding behind all of the stuff that they've hoarded throughout the years. Well, is the NBA about to send in back to Utah to try to find Danny Ainge because he got all those picks for Gobert, all the picks for Mitchell, and now reports are he wants to trade Bogdanovich, Malik sure. Beasley also, so and Conley. My Conley, so, sure. How, how many more picks? We will not be able to find Danny Ainge. He's hoarding all the damn picks. Is he going to own all the drafts? For the next four to five years? Well, well, you know, well there's, there's almost a progression of that. Think about it. it. It was the process in Philadelphia with Sam Hinkie. Then it was Sam Presti selling off his Westbrooks and his Chris Pauls and his Paul Georges. And he had all the picks. Now Danny Ainge does. But Big O, imagine if you were back working for someone and not an independent contractor. And you were working, whether it was QAM or 790 or wherever you were. And you could convince your boss, stay with me. And I promise you, in seven years, I am going to have the best radio program ever. It's incredible what these guys do is they're buying time. There was no pressure on Sam, on Sam Presti right now in Oklahoma City. It's like, oh, well, we saw Holmgren. You're going to start getting a pick. It's going to work out. Your hoarder analogy I would put to this. When you see one of these home improvement shows and they tear it down to the studs, that's what we're seeing right now in Utah. It's easy to tear down to the studs. It's not always so easy to remodel. But Danny Ainge, you know what he bought? He bought time. Because now he can tell everyone, exhale, we'll take care of this in due time. It's a great place to be when you're executive and you're still collecting that executive salary. I'm with you there. Now, so we hoarded picks with Philadelphia. We hoarded picks with the Celtics. They're hoarding picks in New Orleans. They're hoarding picks in OKC. And now they're hoarding picks in Utah. Okay, question I have for you. How many titles so far for the hoarders? Well, we're waiting on Philadelphia. I mean, that's sort of... I, I'm just saying. I'm just so far, so far, Sixers and, and the Seas are ahead in the hoarding category. Ahead but of not the, the Warriors, ultimate so goal. Utah, but not the ultimate goal because no Boston got all those picks for Garnett and for Pierce and when they made their ancillary moves there. And they did get Jason Tatum, and they did get Jalen Brown, and they did get to the finals this year, but yes. they still have yet to win. And that's, that's what I'm you just and saying. I that's the most successful run of hoarders. Yes. But I'm just saying, I I'm interested to find out if this hoarding experiment works. Because if somebody wins a title, as you know, a copycat, everybody then else is going to sure. jump in. But I, I want to see. I want to see if something happens here because. We have several teams now that have gone down this road of hoarding, and it's 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 interesting because it's completely the opposite of Pat Riley, who is Oprah Winfrey. You can have a first rounder, sure. and you can have a first rounder, and you can have a first rounder, but yet there are banners hanging there for them and not for these other guys. And look at our recent champions. They've all been the live in the moment mode. Even the Warriors, whether you didn't like them signing Durant or not, they made a great team better. Even this past year, instead when Jonathan Wiseman was out, instead of playing Kaminga, they brought in an Otto Porter Jr. They brought back an Andre Iguodala. Yeah. They lived in the moment. When the Toronto Raptors won their title, they knew they were renting Kawhi Leonard Why? for one season. They gave up a mainstay in DeRozan, but they lived in the moment. The Lakers, when they beat the Heat in the bubble, they gave up their assets, like you mentioned, to New Orleans for Anthony Davis. They signed a bunch of older players that year. They won their title. They lived in the moment. What we've seen lately is the entire run there. Cleveland. Cleveland gave up the first-round pick that was Wiggins to get Kevin Love in that trade. They lived in the moment. So it's interesting. You can sell me your BS about the future and hoarding the draft, right. but the teams that live in the moment are the teams that have won the championships, and we've seen that. That's the path to follow, is you get it done and you get it done now, which is why the Heat at least tried for Durant. 
at least tried for Mitchell and will continue to keep trying for someone because, again, the trade process does not end until the second week of February. Give it time. There's still another move that's going to be made. They're not just sitting on their butts. Yeah, and, and obviously their way works better than the hoarding way. Uh, by, uh, bad news for the Celtics, but then again, this is what happens when you sign Danilo Gallinari because he has had a long list of injury, injury injuries in his career, and he's now out for the year. So that's a, that's a blow to their. And you uh, know what? And when they made their moves, everyone was talking about the two moves the Celtics made. I never looked at it that way. I looked at it as Malcolm Brogdon makes their bench better, and that was a great move. But Gallinari, he gets played out of the playoffs. He can't defend anyone. He was a right. non-factor in the Heat series against the Hawks in the first round this year. He does one thing well and shoot, but those players, as we know. Don't play in the playoffs, whether it's the Caponos, the James Jones, the, the Duncan Robinsons, those players who you get exposed defensively. So the Gallinari thing, yes, Especially it's a, loss for, the, it's a yeah. loss for the regular season that you can't sit Horford as much as you want, but it's not a playoff loss. Their big name is Malcolm Brogdon. That was their major addition. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, should we worry that USA lost to Mexico in the FIBA America's Cup? You know what? The whole point for that roster they put together was to get to the world championships. This is not a seeding tournament for that. You know what? You're going to send – these aren't even G League players because G League players are going I, to I NBA camp. Yeah. yeah, these are sub-G League players who don't have to come back and go to NBA camp. God bless Norris Cole. But when's the last time we heard from Norris Cole? So let him have some fun. Let him go I, to I South I saw America. that roster and I was like – Yurt Saban's too good to play on that roster. Yes, yes. <laughs> those those kind of guys. So you know what? You got to field the team. It just shows you the NBA guys will only go to so such a level there. All right. Um, what what do you got working at the Sun Sentinel, my friend? So folks well, can check I, As out. people saw, I previewed it, but I wrote a little bit about Tim Hardaway talking about Kyle Lowry over the weekend at the Sun Sentinel. But I talked to Tim Hardaway for his Hall of Fame induction. Uh, tomorrow online, I'm going to post a story about how Tim – God bless Udonis Haslam, but he says heat culture didn't start with Udonis Haslam's 20 seasons. It started when Pat Riley arrived in 95 and then made the trade for SOBs. And Tim rattled off the names, the PJ yeah, Browns, the Dan right. Marleys, the Alonzo Mornings, the he's SOBs right. who got in the trenches and after the team made the playoffs only twice in their first seven years, said we're turning it around. It was really interesting. Tim said, I respect the hell out of the big three and Dwayne Wade and Jimmy Butler and what they're doing. But don't tell me Heat Culture started with this group because no. Heat Culture started. And matter of fact, he brought up a really good name. He said he thinks Heat Culture started with Keith Askins, with sort of the first of those guys who would dive on the floor, grab the ball, bite you in the ankle, and just keep playing like that. So I thought that was interesting. So tomorrow I, I have an interview with Tim Hardaway saying, look, I know I made the Hall of Fame for the glitz and glamour of Run TMC with Chris Mullen and Mitch Richmond. But when I came to Miami, I feel like I also started something special. And I'm glad he's getting his due Saturday in Springfield. You'll see that online, sunsentinel.com Tuesday, and in your Wednesday newspaper. And what I love is, this is why I told you a couple of years ago, no, man, I want to do this year-round. Whoever tells you we can't have a good basketball conversation in September, they're out of their minds. We just had a great one. Thank you, Ira. Appreciate it. Catch you on Wednesday on redrecover.com, Inside the Paint, and then back on our usual Friday for Acura of Pembroke Pines Report. Thank you, Big O. Thank you, sir. There you go. Ira Winderman. Excellent basketball talk right there. We switch gears. We'll talk a little football right now. This is the Big O Show. This is the 